So meanwhile, Puerto Rico is still recovering from widespread devastation from Hurricane Maria. CBS News correspondent David Begno did extensive reporting on the island for two weeks before the storm hit as it barreled over the island and of course the aftermath as Puerto Ricans have struggled without food, water and power. The winds are ferocious right now, gusting above 120 miles per hour. The communication has been cut. Power is out. Folks here aren't even able to reach relatives. I know that leaders aren't supposed to cry, and especially not on TV. But we are having a humanitarian crisis. Even the hospitals need help. There's only one operating room that's functioning right now. These are Americans sitting in line, sleeping in their car, desperately trying to get fuel. The first person we saw when we got here was the mayor, and he said, go anywhere and you will find destruction. People are suffering. People are crying. More than with children are crying. But the main thing is that we have to work together. We have to keep hope alive. And David Begno joins me now. David, it is so good to see you in the flesh and blood after talking to you via satellite and shaky satellite from time to time. Um, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be here. Your reporting was just fantastic. And uh, I remember you telling me as we had a chance to talk one time before we did the interview that the reporting from Puerto Rico was some of the most meaningful work you've done. I have never seen journalism seem to make a difference quite like this story has. Yeah. And, and, and for all these reasons, Anne-Marie, there was no communication on the island. There was no power. It literally, I've never covered a disaster where everything seemed to stop quite like it did in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. So you have the Puerto Ricans on the mainland here who were so desperate to get information from there. And you had Puerto Ricans who were able to get a spotty cell phone signal on the island. And some of the only reporting they were able to see was the reporting that we were doing, both on air and online. Mm. And so, listen, when journalism can make a difference and serve a valued purpose, yeah. it feels like a darn good thing. Yeah. And on this story, it seemed to work for all the right reasons. Um, you work long hours when you're covering a hurricane like this. But if you're not on uh, his social media, you may not have known that David was doing all this other stuff, too. You were sort of recording stuff and uploading. You were doing a lot of stuff, and you were helping people get in touch with relatives. I mean, it was really something. You know what happened was after we got off CBS this morning, yeah. and I would talk to you each morning on CBSN, there were urgent requests from people. I was getting thousands of messages a minute from people who wanted to know what happened here. I, I heard that the, hospital, the power went out at the hospital, and people are being evacuated. Can you confirm? I'll never forget going to the airport. We were live on CBS this morning. And Anne-Marie, there were a thousand people laid out on the floor of the mm -hmm. airport and kids who were naked, stripped naked by their parents because they were sweating profusely. They were sleeping in sweat as their parents fanned them. People didn't have food and water. Yeah. Beyond reporting it, I said, we have to go ask people why it's happening. So I went to the governor and I said, Governor, do you know what's going on at the airport? And he said, yes. He I did saw know? your reporting. Oh, well, he said, okay. I saw your reporting and I ordered that supplies be sent there. And I said, yeah. they're not there. And he walked out of the interview and he said, send them. And within an hour, they got there. The point is not, yay, look what we were able to do. Yeah. It's, yay, that's what journalism should be doing. Right. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. Because I don't think it's enough to say, here's what's happening. You got to go ask the people who can change it. Right. What are they going to do to change it? Very good point. Uh, what was the most frustrating thing about reporting from Puerto Rico? That nobody seemed to be able to explain to me why they couldn't move it out of an emergency phase. It's 14 days after that disaster, and people are still drinking stream water and bathing in mm -hmm. it today. And you had you had covered the hurricane in Texas and Florida. It was there was a difference. Well, there was a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, listen, Harvey was devastating, but the difference with Harvey is that the Cajun Navy from Louisiana came in, and people drove from Oklahoma, and folks came from Austin. Mm -hmm. Right? You had people who could drive in immediately. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're surrounded by water in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And the island was... There was no just, help. That, if right. your help wasn't mobilized and at the ready from the beginning, yeah. you were in trouble. Yeah. And the majority of the island, Emory, 90% of the island doesn't have power. And Still, do you know that 50% may not have it for a year? A year? A year. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And with no power, you have no water. People died who were on oxygen because the power went out and there was no hospital to go to yeah. because the hospital had shut down. There were no paramedics on the road. I mean, I, I've never covered a natural disaster where it took so long to get the basics to mm -hmm. people. What was the most heartwarming thing you witnessed? 
the patience and resilience of the Puerto Rican people. When I went to that dam in Guajataca to make sure that it was structurally sound and wasn't going to endanger the lives of 100 to 200,000 people, mm -hmm. we came back to our car and there was a woman who was feeding our security guard. Really? Now they had water that they were rationing and they were still offering it to our security guard and feeding him. Um, listen, before we let you go, uh, give us the current status. How are things in Puerto Rico when you left? They're desperate. Mm -hmm. Desperate. It cannot be overstated. They are desperate. They need the basics. And here's another frustration. There's a lot of help there, but giving it to people and putting it in their hands for whatever reason has become a challenge as Still. well. And I said to the governor, why is it that people are messaging me and saying, where's the food when you're telling me that we made a delivery there? And he said, here's what I think is happening. Because the communication infrastructure is decimated, mayors can't tell their people where to come and find the food. So I said, what are you going to do about it? And he said, I'm telling mayors to get a megaphone and I want to fly a helicopter over there with an intercom system to literally radio to people on the ground you can find food and water at this location. Well, it's going to take innovation, creativity. I mean, you managed to get the message out to a lot of people. David Begno, thank you so much. It's what journalism is meant to do.